Hello everyone, today we're going to be talking about DRSync. I have two FreeNAS servers set up and well, I need to sync some files between them. And what better way to do it than RSync? So we're going to show two different ways of push and pull configuration. A server and let's get into the meat of it. So you need to enable rsync D on their services file transfer on both servers obviously. Services file transfer rsync D and the default port is 883 I think. 873. Okay and um, let me see this is the server that we are going to be putting data onto. So I don't have to enable any rsync modules on it yet uh, I will do the pool configuration first so let's go to the other server now this is the server that I'm going to be pulling data from so I need to enable the rsync module which I did so I'll, it's very important that you give it a name uh, that's probably lowercase in no spaces FreeNAS has been nothing but headaches, honestly, in this manner. So give it a name, don't put any spaces in it, and give it a description, whatever you want. And make sure you include full path to the root folder, so including mount, and then your volume, and then your shares. Because this is a pool only, we can leave it as read only so max connection is 2 and then uh, user you can't go wrong with root and wheel because those are your super user accounts but from security standpoint you should probably use lesser accounts but that's not uh, we're not going to be really stressing that here for ease of use you know your super user accounts will give you the most bang for your buck and then you have hosts allow and hosts deny it's self-explanatory you can actually specify a single host that you're going to be receiving data that that is going to be connecting to you and pulling data from the server because this is going to be the server that's sending the data that's why i'm setting up the rsync module in such a way you can click save and uh, you can leave hosts you know, uh, empty because that just tells the NAS that anybody can connect to it. Let me just check SSHD, it looks like it's all default, that's fine. So, on the other server, we have um, our rsync module obviously enabled and it's in default A73. And we are going to set up a task that pulls data from our server that has the data to this server. So, if in this server the, the calendar module is amazing, you see the tabs at the top? You can just click and drag any of those into your calendar at, and drop it at any time. And uh, the window will pop up, it's very interactive and it gives you a lot of flexibility and, and ease of setting up tasks on the fly. And you can have them repetitive, uh, you know, uh, every day, every week, every month, or every custom amount of days. So let's create our rsync task. I just dragged it down into the past time, doesn't matter. Uh, I'll give it a name, um, rsync, makes sense. And it's going to be a module because I've created a module on the other server. And you can also do it with uh, SSHD, if you remember. Um, you have to make sure you remember that exact name because that's how you have to spell it so for me it's take it away and direction is pull because we're pulling the data from that module through that module from that server right and then you specify user and the path source now the source um, uh, is uh, this host that you're working on so for me it's again I found that it likes if you include uh, all the way back to the root folder so it's mount and then my volume which is called ice 
and then my uh, share, my SMB share, which is called Lollipop. And I don't actually remember, I think I put root for remote user, and the host is 192.168.1.5, and remote path destination in the same manner. We're going to include the mount folder and then the volume and then the shares because I only want to pull a specific folder I'm including the full path to that folder so all the way back from the root mount so I'm including mount and that's not really intuitive for people so make sure when you're uh, doing this in FreeNAS that you include actually the full path to that folder and then you have to specify that module in exact way as it was specified over there now also take a look at uh, the capitals that I used in uh, the past at the top I use for ice and at the bottom for books I use capitals because uh, it is very case sensitive and I don't want to make a silly mistake of using one or the other and it's very easy to make a mistake in in this manner and it might throw an error so don't give it any chance because I use capitals for that folder and for that volume I'm including those capitals in the path itself just to make sure that uh, that's not going to create me any problems recursive is a big thing so make sure you include recursive of course and then any other options you might want to do and look at that it's running you just hit the run and it did it simple as that that's pretty pretty amazing I have to say so you can save it obviously um, you can see it now I saved this as a daily event um, I don't really need it but <laughs> it's easy enough to create a schedule for any of these modules that you want so I'm gonna delete it really fast so this was a pool configuration. I've just pulled data from uh, one server to the other. Now we're going to go into the push configuration. Now push configuration can be a little tricky. So on my destination server now, now this server that is receiving data, I have to create an rsync module. So because this, uh, we're going to sync the data through this module, obviously. So give it a name that makes sense because it's receiving data. I'm going to call it give it up. <laughs> give it to me. I mean, <laughs> oh, uh, let's change it into a name that's accept acceptable to PG-13 because we might have young children watching this. And the path again, uh, full path. Make sure you include the mount. So we have mount, then the volume, and then the share. Because this is the server that's receiving now, we have switched roles, right? And the key is that you want to give it read and write access now. Because you're pushing data, you have to be able to write into the folder and possibly read into the folder if you're going to have it as repeating and doing uh, only updates. So make sure you put read and write in that case and max connection is really up to you and the rules user uh, like I said you can't go wrong with root I'm gonna try it with a local user that I created and the local group that I created and see if that works and again allowed host denied hosts that's entirely up to you like I said that's a good practice to keep it secure to just put one allowed host or deny everything else so we have this rsync module called give it up and uh, we're supposed to receive data to this server by pushing the data from the other server so let's go uh, to the other server and here we are and we need to create a task again in the same manner I'm just gonna drag rsync module down and uh, and make sure I hit push on the direction and let's call it whatever right it makes no difference and let's try to use um, I'm gonna try with the root user see if I don't mess up permissions on this thing again 
the path source now, the source where the files are located, again full path and I'm gonna use um, the capitals in the same way uh, just to make sure that I didn't make any uh, I didn't make any mistakes with that and remote path again, the full path which is mount ice and then lollipop and the name of the remote module uh, if I remember correctly that is give it up one word no spaces or lowercase which Freenas seems to really like I'm gonna make it recursive and preserve permissions and maybe archive um, let's try to run it mm. might as well try to run it huh? that might give me an issue the, uh, on the user with permissions but eh, we, we're not gonna know until we try to run it right and we have an issue right let's see host key is not known verification failed okay let's make sure that this is a correct I didn't misspell anything everything looks okay everything looks okay on the bottom lollipop let me change the ruser maybe to root on uh, both sides Let's see right so I'm gonna change it on both sides to root user just to make sure that you know with super special privileges it's easier okay now save that in a module and uh, let's uh, give it a shot and we have an issue again maybe uh, if I save the module maybe it wants to be saved so everything seems to be okay I don't see any mistakes sometimes with these things you just have to guess <laughs> and uh, this happens to me a lot so I saved it now so let's see if I run it now seems to be going amazing so it wanted to be saved first so I'm pushing data from this server to the other server using rsync and let's uh, view it in, in console really fast if we can get to it before it finishes task show there we go and it's already night it's already finished <laughs> okay so it tells you in the tasks that's really nifty so this is only one folder I mean I have like four terabytes of data I could have you know synced everything over so that would have taken a while but this is a good example so I've just synced one folder it took I don't know 10 seconds to sync that folder if I go to that folder on Lollipop now, yep, all the books are there. Amazing. And really a success on both sides. We had a pull configuration and push configuration. And both of them worked. So both ways worked. Um, the key here is you can use rsync with other servers. With It doesn't have to be a freeNAS to freeNAS. It can be... A, a dealing, a Synology, a, a Windows Server, or anything really, you can use rsync. rsync is one of those industry standards that's been out there for as long as, as I've been out there in IT plus some. So, thank you for watching and have a great day and uh, enjoy the video. And you know, if you liked it, like it. If you want to subscribe, go ahead. Let's try to grow this user base. And like I said, have a great day. Bye.